Hi, welcome to the Bloom Show. This is Saeed with Above All Flowers and New Bloom Solutions. The Bloom Show is brought to you by Above All Flowers and New Bloom Solutions. And the purpose of the show is to help innovate, connect, and bloom. Continue to help the flower industry to innovate, connect, and bloom by connecting you to experts in our industry, information, news alerts, and just truly creating a community. So this show is for the flower industry community. So we do really, really encourage a couple of things. One, follow us. Two, press the alert key. Three, ask questions. Feel free to chime in. Even our guest, many people know him. He's world famous. Um, so chime in, say hi, say what's up. And we all enjoy that. And the guests will enjoy that as well. But do feel free to chime in and ask questions. So as we know, Valentine's Day was um, just recently. So we decided to do a special correspondence coming out of California to understand um, what we're looking at and what has happened in California, what things went wrong, what things went great, and what can improve. So for that, I assigned the mission and the task to Yost Bungarts. I hope I said it right, Yost. I know it's Yost like toast, but his last name is Yost Bungarts, the CEO and president of Floral Abundance. He's also a board member of Cal Flowers for the last nine years, and he's the marketing chair for that awesome initiative that we've heard all about, that flower feeling. So it's a privilege to have him on to talk about California. He is based out of San Diego, so no one better to um, share with us how California did, understanding if the drought's affected, and other cool topics that we're going to talk about today. So bring your questions. Don't forget to follow, um, like, share and press the alert key. Yost. Hey, good morning, Saeed. How are you? Good morning, sir. I'm very well. Pleasure to always see you, even though I saw you a couple seconds ago, but it's a pleasure to see you again. How's it going? It's now official. It's great. Uh, I know you're in, you're in Idaho right now, right? I'm live from Idaho. We had 30 inches of snow yesterday, but we like snow, so that's why I'm here. And um, operate my office from here when I'm not in California, in Santa Barbara. And it's pretty cold in Idaho now? Uh, yes. Um, it's uh, Well, actually, it was in the 20s, but um, I think it's around freezing today. But I just heard a winter storm warning for Santa Barbara County. That's the first one in 30 years because we're expecting snow in Santa Barbara up to as low as a thousand feet, which is pretty low. Um, so, okay. Pretty yeah, gotcha. storm. Wow. So we already have a, a some comments. Um, Kuki, hello. Hi, Saeed. And we have someone saying icon. Um, it's Guillermo. Hey, Kuki. <laughs> so everybody's already saying hi. So please feel free to ask questions. It's super important. Um, so yo, tell us about yourself. Please introduce yourself to the audience, which may not know you. We, we, many of us already know Mr. Yost, um, but please introduce yourself to those people that may not know you. Oh, well, shall I do the two-minute version or the five-minute version? Let's get the two-minute version right, from you right. yesterday. Thank I, you. Uh, I was born and raised in the Netherlands. Um, I used to say I'm from Holland. I've been imported as a tulip specialist studied horticulture. My first job was in uh, Michigan in Livonia for the Dutch flower auctions and a marketing group called Sierra Four. And uh, from there, I moved into uh, wholesale flower bulbs, cut flowers, and um, eventually started the retail flower shop for my wife in New Canaan, Connecticut. That's called Bomb Fleur. It's still there. And I was a customer of Flora Abundance that started in 1994 in California and became more and more uh, intrigued with that business and uh, it was owned by five growers became a partner in the business and eventually the growers went on to do their own thing and um, mostly Dutch growers actually and I've been operating floor abundance for some time and uh, we're uniquely located there in the in the middle of the flower growing uh, area between Watsonville and Carlsbad so Santa Barbara Carpinteria is right in the middle and you're also Big, big supporter of Cal Flowers and of that flower feeling? Yes. Um, so uh, my dream, I've been in the business for 42 years. I'm not that old. It's just because I started when I was young. And um, I've been uh, hoping to see a national advertising campaign to promote the use of flowers for weekly and everyday use. You know, we all know the holidays and we're going to talk about Valentine's Day in a moment. Um, you know, what, it, what the challenges there are every year. And uh, but 
weekly, daily flour consumption is the name of the game because if we increase the consumption in the U.S., it's good for everybody. Local grown, American grown, uh, imported flowers, you name it. It's, uh, it should be part of everyday life. But we have a lot of work to do, but at least we've started. And it's encouraging to see the first results. So um, quick, qu quick question. One is, you know, we've all heard that that song um, of Miley Cyrus, Flowers. So yeah. we hope that it increased sales um, here in the U.S. during Valentine's Day. How did California growers do for Valentine's Day? Was it an up year, uh, same year as last year, down year? Well, a little bit across the board. So for, for most of them, from what I heard, was about the same. That's what I hear, about the same. There's a few that were down with production. Uh, but the main story was the cold weather in California. Um, okay. So all the flowers are grown in hoop houses or greenhouses. But this year, because it's very cold December, uh, extremely cold January. And right now, I think we're getting the lowest temperatures this week. So crops were behind. But the big factor was, for for example, for rose growers, um, the heat to greenhouses is so expensive. I think it's tripled the gas price. You've seen the debates on the news uh, but, you know, if your heating bill goes from twenty five to seventy five thousand dollars for the months of December, you have a choice to make. So a number of rose growers decided to just let it let Valentine's go and we'll focus on our crops for the event season, which starts right around now in a couple of weeks, weddings and uh, that will keep them busy until November. So that means sales were lower this year? Uh, for those rose grower sales were lower, but the overall wholesalers that are, you know, if you take a grower like Sun Valley, Dr. Lane DeVries earlier this week, he has such a diversified program that his crops came in on time and uh, they did pretty well, about the same as last year. And when you say you do about the same as last year, don't forget last year was a big year for, for most. Yeah. So it's actually pretty good because if you watch uh, the economic news, uh, are we in a recession or going into recession? I don't know anymore, but you know what? Flowers do pretty well in the recession. And I think overall, from what I hear, Valentine's sales around the country have been uh, have been good, uh, if not great for some. And other than the weather being with the rose issues, was there any other trouble spots such as drought, um, things of that nature? Because yeah, so, drought has been an issue for a minute. So uh, what was helpful compared to last year was uh, transportation issues were almost non-existing. Uh, we had some challenges due to heavy rain in some of the mountain areas we've had the wettest uh i mean some of the reservoirs around santa barbara are filled this first time since 2005 um, that's uh unheard of we went from extreme drought to a moderate drought in some areas there is no drought right now on the maps but uh we still have a long way to go but the weather was the rains uh did not make it easy to move some of the product around the week before valentine's and uh, but overall um, the rain is welcome. It will fill up the uh, reservoirs. They have filled up. We have a huge amount of snow in the Sierras that will eventually melt. So hopefully uh, we catch some of that water and, uh, and agriculture will benefit from that too. And were there any excesses? Were there any products that were just so abundant, um, like maybe eucalyptus or anything of that nature this year? No, I didn't hear much about uh, that. It was, uh, there were some crops behind due to the cold weather. I know in the Carlsbad area, I think there were a few growers behind with wax flower and some of the uh, more exotic uh, Australian type flowers. I talked to Steve Dion and he told me uh, um, some, some information about uh, some crops were missed for the holidays. And again, there you go, it's a holiday. It's one day, but it's weeks leading up. And if you miss the date due to weather or climate, change then um it's hard to catch up for the holiday yeah of course of course and then um what i guess the, the other questions because we're kind of covering all the topics already you're doing a great job of kind of covering even the questions i'm about to ask but um, i don't have a cheat sheet either so you know yeah yeah thanks <laughs> so a question is i've heard a little bit of like the cannabis market how it's affected the flower industry can you tell us a little bit more about that yeah, I, uh, I went on the road a couple of weeks ago to visit growers. And um, as you know, six or six years ago, the new generation of flower growers, uh, there's some growers who completely went out of the cut flowers into cannabis in a big way, uh, rebuilding greenhouses, the latest installations uh, to grow this crop. 
And uh, there were also a lot of outsiders coming in right now from what I've heard from a couple of growers uh, is that there's a big decline in pricing about 80% compared to two years ago. Uh, the reason is there's an overproduction, obviously supply and demand, but uh, every state in the country now is allowing cannabis production. And uh, I guess there's only so much that can, uh, can make it to the market. So I've seen some growers completely stopping to grow cannabis um, and there's uh, several changes coming up and, and some of them are going back into cut flowers because they get calls, hey, I need your advice. I want to pick your brain. What should I grow? And I love hearing that because if we can buy local flowers uh, on top of the imported flowers. It's great to have. And, um, you know, you just need to guide them. And uh, hopefully with these new greenhouse installations and the higher flower prices that we've had since COVID on the growers level, wholesale and retail, if that market maintains itself, then uh, it would be great for everybody. And uh, may we get some more flower growers back. Yeah, exactly. And how do you feel that that would affect the the, the market? Would it give us a flush? Or would it? Or would well, it no. Well, yeah. There's sometimes it's like with farmers. If uh, if a if a potato sells well one year, everybody gets into potatoes the next year. But um, it's a little bit of a ranunculus right now. I don't say there's an overproduction because yes. it's a very popular flower. Yeah. But uh, that will work itself out. I mean, um, for the domestic flower production or California, if you will, where, you know, still, I think 70 or 80% of the flowers produced in the U.S. are grown in California because we have the uh, Mediterranean climate. Um, I think production will, will hopefully increase, uh, but it will take a number of years before you see uh, big plantations coming back, if you will, uh, with large acreage of a certain crop. It's uh, the market is asking for new, different flower varieties. The supermarkets ask for certain type of flowers. We're we're not in the supermarket business, but I keep an eye on it because, after all, everybody, every consumer will go to a supermarket and sees flowers, and the more flowers you see, the more likely it is that they will buy them. So. Um, I just hope we get some uh, some more production in, in and around us, uh, that some farms come back. Um, but that's my hope. And Joost, I love that fact that you say that, that if the more flowers they see, the more flowers they'll buy. And I think that that's a, a fact. Um, the more flowers they see at the ma um, supermarket, even though it's a com com competitor, it's creating a culture. Um, and I think that that's what you guys are trying to do with um, that flower feeling. Uh, so do you want to share a little bit? I know you love to talk about that flower feeling. And we talk about it all day. Yeah. All day. Let, let me take a question yeah. real quick. And at the end, we'll talk about that flower feeling. But give me a second real quick. So Sergio Sarmento is saying, is there any kind of growing new crops in California in the near future? Well, like I just mentioned, ranunculus, the hybrid ranunculus that uh, we've been importing from Italy, beautiful varieties. Uh, they're sold on our Italian ranunculus. Dahlias, of course, is very popular, uh, but they're hard to transport, so that's great for local markets. Uh, anemones are very popular. So crops that, bulb crops that do well in cool climates uh, are, are making a comeback. Lilies uh, are there. The new varieties are, uh, are gaining popularity. And then you have the field crops, which we don't have right now because it's a little too wet and cold. But like I said, we have a Mediterranean climate, so these crops will come back quickly and can be easily adjusted. Uh, we're finding some locally grown tuberoses again. And why do I mention that one? It's a very popular flower. It's a beautiful fragrance. When we import them, they, uh, import them from Mexico, they just don't last. It's a different variety. But the locally grown, if you can find them, <clears throat> are great uh, to add to your assortment. But for, for Flora Bundles, as you look behind me, there's a picture in late November in our cooler so the selection is less, but we, uh, our slogan is everything under the sun. So we look for cool stuff. Um, one of my buyers calls it, Jenna calls it killer. This stuff is killer. You know, when it comes in, sometimes there's only a few weeks. Um, you know, we see Baronia making a comeback. Um, of course the new varieties of wax flower that are grown in the Carlsbad area, um, and, and bulb crops, uh, miscellaneous bulbs, as we call them. So the weirder it looks, the cooler it is, the more demand we can create from designers. And that's what we like. And that's thanks to the social media aspect of it. You can show and share photos and you know everything about that. And then 
a consumer or a bride sees, hey, I want that flower, they go to the local florist and say, nah, I'm sorry, we can't get it. My wholesaler says, hard to get, impossible. But then they go online and they research and they they end up finding it. And uh, so we often get phone calls from florists that we don't know around the country. And he says, hey, I hear you got this and that item. Can we buy from you? And she says, yeah, of course. You know, and they go online and we'll take care of it. So we love that uh, that angle of the business, and uh, especially with new items. So, um, yeah, so we keep searching for new cool crops that work, uh, that our customers can use in arrangements that ship well as well, because we ship 90% uh, of our flowers that we sell are going out of state, out of California. For you, for course, your, for your, for your business yeah. model, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. And how did your, how did e-commerce do for you this year compared to maybe last year or to even well, 2019? Uh, good. A lot depends on the, on the shipping because we uh, we're big users of FedEx and that's uh Cal flowers partner, federal express uh, ships nationwide overnight. We use the other guys as well. And we use airlines, but the weather is always the big factor. So if you recall, two weeks before Valentine's, there was an ice storm in Memphis and all kinds of trouble on the horizon. And uh, I'm glad that was not Valentine's week. We've had that in the past, but this year it went very well. And with Valentine's being on a Tuesday, you have time to ship out things last minute on Monday, uh, two customers for Tuesday arrival. And um, I think we had a very good record for deliveries uh, that week and the Saturday before Valentine's. So we shipped uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday were our heavy days to ship out. And uh, Monday, uh, last minute orders or the real perishable flowers uh, for customers. And uh, customers were cautious in buying, I think, overall. Uh, conservatives, maybe, maybe the word. Um, but they wanted to sell out too. So um, that's what I saw happening all across. But I think talking to more retailers, it was a good Valentine's Day. Some say it was the best ever. Yo, so question for you. When it comes to the purchasing habits of a wholesaler or a company like yours um, based out of California, what percentage is locally grown versus imported? Well, we're a little bit different because we're located in Car Carpinteria for a reason. Um, we, uh, between, I would say between March and October, the end of October for my company, Floor Abundance, 70% uh, of the flowers we, uh, procure are domestically grown. Most of them, California, Oregon, Washington state. And we just, uh, we're certified American grown wholesaler. What does that mean is, uh, you know, we've been checked out by this independent agency. Um, but we also import flowers. Uh, especially in the winter time when there's no production or little production. And we just mentioned the roses, of course, we buy locally grown roses, but we also buy beautiful garden roses. We have a program called garden roses direct, and that's all from Alexander farms out of Colombia, Bogota. And we have demand for these flowers. We need to have them then and, and, and good quality. So we ship them in uh, when needed and deliver them overnight. And then that's very important aspect to our program. Um, so we're a little bit unusual with having uh, such a variety of locally grown. We're dealing, I think, with 300 growers uh, and a minimum. A lot of boutique growers that pop up, they may have five items, they drop them off. And that continues. Um, it's uh, it's not easy, but uh, we make it happen. And uh, um, yeah, that's what, uh, that's what the strength is of our uh, company. And then here I have a quick question is Kuki Knowles. Thank you, Kuki, for us always chiming in. And thank you again, Sergio, for your question. Is any okay. imports from Africa? Well, we buy from uh, we buy things from Holland. Yeah, there's there's imports from Africa that go through Amsterdam, basically. So, yes, uh, certain varieties uh, of roses, especially those that are in large demand and short availability. Uh, from South America come from Africa, but we don't import anything direct from Africa. It's too complicated with the logistics right now, especially during COVID. So we would rely on a on a on a importer or exporter from Holland that we work with, and uh, get them that way. And because we carry you know thirty five hundred different varieties of flowers on a typical week, uh, we don't buy large numbers of anything. It's uh, it's the assortment that makes it. Our slogan is everything under the sun. It should be almost everything under the sun, but it's too much work to change that logo. Um, so we'll leave it where it is. But um, yeah, that's uh, 
African flowers, I think the logistics have been a challenge from what I've read, Cookie. So, um, um, and you have plenty of varieties uh, you can buy locally or from South America next door. Fantastic. So now back to, in a couple more minutes left, um, to something that is close to your heart. And you told me just recently that, that you're not, you're, and you didn't say it in a bad way, but hey, you know, I'm not paid for this, but you have such passion um, for that flower feeling um, that it really looks like it's your full-time job, <laughs> honestly, because you're so in, well, into it. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, what are you doing for it? And really, how can people become a part of it to, to, to help? Well, what we're doing is it, it, it's, it's fun to do. It's a very difficult project because we're asking people in the industry for money, real dollars, to contribute to the next campaign. The campaign that's out there, Self-Care Made Easy, has been a hit. We keep getting new numbers in. Uh, we've won a couple of awards, uh, but awards don't bring you dollars. It brings you media and, and uh, you know, acknowledgement that the campaign has uh, been put together well. We work with 180 Amsterdam, great advertising agency, great creative group, and we are saving money to come up with the next campaign for next year. Uh, we don't need a lot of money, but if everybody contributes and the large companies, especially trunk companies, uh, transportation, everybody who benefits from an increase in floral consumption in the U.S. should put in something. And we have some large South American growers getting on board. We have a lot of domestic growers on board, which is great. And some of them are, are debating, shall we do it? And it's not the amount necessarily to give, but it's to get participation because we're in this together. And if we can unite uh, and, and, and explain to the consumer what we're doing and how flowers can help you in daily life. Uh, they're good for the mind. Uh, you see SEF promoting. There's studies been that uh, flowers are calming people. We've had this whole you know, uh, a mindset about COVID and the aftermath of working at home, being isolated. So if you look at the commercial um, of that flower feeling, the video is it's hilarious. It's funny, but it's a lot of truth to it. People are happy when they get flowers and it just makes them happy. And we're not selling a particular flower or from a particular origin. We like all flowers to be in people's home. Uh, listen to Miley, Miley Cyrus song. She tells it best buy myself some flowers even if i have trouble with my boyfriend or husband whatever um it's good for everybody so um we it, it's going to take time to put this uh next round together but it's working and we keep sending out the same message and with people like you uh help from the industry to get the word out there and explain how you can use the assets in your own local market i believe will will succeed and uh the more funds we get the more we can do it's simple as that so, okay. yeah, exactly. and I'm, I'm adamant about it because, uh, yeah, I'm passionate about flowers. Um, but I, I believe if we can have a national advertising campaign with most participating, it would be great for our industry. And, and also understanding in the florists that are listening, um, you can access this content, uh, which is available to you. And I think that that's my favorite part is that is accessing this content to use it on your social media, to use it through your email marketing, yep. to use it through your Instagram and LinkedIn. And it's free to you. And it might, you know, if you want, if you're getting benefits from there, then put in and support the cause because there is a benefit there that they're creating this content for you to use. So we're actually using it um, on a weekly basis for different um, clients that we have. And it just allows, and you wouldn't imagine the likes and the engagement that we're getting. It's great engagement um, content. So if you need more information, where can they go for that? Mr. Well, Yoko? they can go to that flowerfeeling.org. It's a nonprofit. Uh, that's the website. You register, you just click on register. You put in your email address then the office will send you back a password. Why do we do that? So at least we know who is uh, looking at the assets. The assets are all the uh, material that's in or the video. You don't need permission to use it. It's free to use and free is not a Dutch word, but gratis is. But um, we do ask you to consider uh, a contribution. If you're an individual designer, give $20 a month. If you're a, a retail floor, small, medium or large, consider a hundred dollars a month uh, you know you can do 
it's painless. You click on that button and you can set your budget. We hope you do it for three years because advertising doesn't work just for one year. We need to continue the campaign. We have some bigger plans. So the more the merrier and, uh, you know, make your little contribution, uh, participate. You get your name listed on the website as well. Uh, we have a list of, you can look on our partners or sponsors on the website. You can see which companies are participating already. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, and, and your company's on there, Saeed. So that looks, uh, yeah, it's great. But we appreciate every, every um, contribution from, um, we have Chrysler, for example, the flower food people from Miami. They're contributed. Why? Because they benefit from uh, increased floral sales. And uh, hearing the Valentine's was great. People expected uh, flat Valentine's, for example. So everything helps. So help move the needle, increase floral consumption. Uh, be positive when you write about flowers. We educated the public. We don't need negative stories. Um, you know, we like chocolate and we like everything else, but flowers is part of life. And uh, that's what we do. So get the word out. Okay. So, Yos, thank you so much for joining us, sharing some insights on how California did, how your business did. And also, I, I know I couldn't go about the show without letting you talk about that flower right. feeling. So thank you right. for sharing your, your passion and for doing so much for the industry. And again, I truly encourage, if you want to save time and money, use those free resources that that flower feeding is offering you because it'll save you two posts a week even if you if you kind of spread out the content um and allows you to stay engaged with your audience so do yep. check that out but yos thank you so much for your time any final words mr yos well i look forward to seeing you in about two weeks at your yes, uh, sir. at your party i think see uh, the, the collaborative yeah, party i'll, I'll share more about that in a minute yeah the wholesale floral convention in miami and i hear it's 90 degrees so i better I better bring a bathing suit, I guess. Do you know your Do you know your booth number? No, I have no idea. Actually, we're in the hallway. I'm there for that flower feeling. So in the hallway, you can't miss it because the display is the one we had in Holland. Okay, um, beautiful display. Yes. Yeah, and then we have uh, Cal Flowers has a display. Chris will be there. Chris Johnson, um, Steve Dion will be there, and I think uh, a couple other board members will be there. Pat from Mage will be there, and uh, we can all chat and talk about the floral industry and hopefully do bigger and better things ahead Fantastic. thank you again yost and thank you for being a Pleasure. collaborator for the the bloom together after party as well and see you at the party thank you take care thank Have you a great day you too Bye -bye. so again thank you to yost for being such a great source of information and for taking his time to share that information with us and his great passion for the flower industry um thank you for everybody being here today quick just uh, some announcements is on the 28th, we're having a special episode of a guest host, which will be Corrine Heck. As you know, she's a fa the founder of Details on Flowers and a pioneer, I consider her an inspiration to startups in the flower industry. And she will be interviewing Alejandro Perez, another pioneer in the startup industry. I'm here in the flower industry. Um, another software company. So both of them will have um, discussions and kind of dig in um, into what it is being a founder, uh, talking about the industry as well, but most importantly, just kind of talking about being a founder in a startup and really sharing information about each other's business and kind of share um, dialoguing together. And I think that that was really cool. And that's been a new format we're doing this year. So if anybody's interested in being a guest host, reach out as i said this is intent intended to give to the community the flower community so it doesn't oh sorry this is not i'm not yost i gotta change that real quick but it's not really about us or about me always speaking it's truly about hearing from other people so please don't forget to subscribe like and comment another topic is we're having the bloom together after party again and it's the third year in a row um we're at 45 different collaborating contributing companies it's going to be tons of fun local music the mayor of the city of Doral is going to be saying a few words on the importance of the flower industry community within the Doral community um free beer free free drinks free beer some games as well some great prizes so if you're interested in that sign up at eventbrite love to see you there we have over 250 people already signed up huge number every penny that is being 
contributed to this event is being used to host this event and any penny left over from this is being donated to florida state florist association scholarship fund and to seed your future two great organizations last year we donated 600 dollars. considering that the donation was only 125 dollars last year we were able to throw a great priority and donate 600 dollars. and this year we're hoping to double the number for both foundations if we don't at least we tried, um, but at least we're going to give something back to the flower industry. And we're doing this as a collaboration of 45 different companies alongside and in collaboration with Wolfsa, SAF, and Molly Mullins. So again, everybody, oh, we have some comments here. Let's see if we could post them. Um, we have Cookie says, thank you, Yost and Saeed. Icon says, we'll see you there. And David Kaplan says, the party will be the best one yet. So too bad David won't be there, but the party will be the best one yet. And hopefully see you guys. And don't forget about next on the 28th um, when we're having the guest host, Corrine Heck, interviewing Alejandro Perez of Comet Sales. So again, to everybody, thank you for your time. Please subscribe, like, press the little alert key so we keep on staying inspired and share, share, share. Have a great day. Bye-bye.